So welcome everybody. Today we have um, Kohai Kavabata and he will talk about symmetry and topology in non-emission physics. So whenever you are ready, Kohai, please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you so much for the introduction. So I'm Kohei Kabata from the University of Tokyo. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this wonderful seminar series. Today, I talk about our recent work on symmetry and topology in non emission physics. I have many wonderful collaborators concerning this topic. In particular, this talk is mainly based on collaborators uh, with uh, collaboration with Nobuyuki Ken and Masatoshi in Kyoto and Shinsen in, in Princeton. So then let's begin with an introduction. So the subject of this seminar series is pseudo Hamitian Hamiltonians in quantum physics. So here we know that the PT symmetry and pseudo Hamiltonianity are important for real spectra of non Hamitian Hamiltonians. However, the role of other symmetry in non Hamitian physics, uh, such as charge conjugation symmetry and chiral symmetry, has yet to be understood clearly. Then we develop general symmetry classification in non Hamitian physics. In Hamitian physics, internal symmetry is generally classified as a celebrated temporal symmetry by Altrand and Zulumbauer. On the other hand, we show that uh, non hamidity changes the nature of symmetry and leads to the 38 fold symmetry class. Well, this is general symmetry classification in non hamidity physics and one of our main results. Another main subject of this talk is topology. The last decades have witnessed the significance of topological phases. Uh, such topological phases are phases of matter characterized by topology of the wave functions and cannot be described by the conventional Landau theory. The first example of the topological phases is found in the integer quantum Hall effect. So here, a distinct phases are characterized by the topological invariant, the charm number in, in this case, and correspondingly robust gapless state states appear. So nowadays we know that such topological phases are not confined to quantum Hall insulators, but are found in everywhere, uh, even in conventional band theory. So for example, topological phases are found in a time reversal symmetric insulator and uh, leading to the quantum spin hole effect. And also in superconductors, a unique topological phases lead to the emergence of Maradona edge states protected by a particle hole symmetry, which may open the possibility of topological quantum computation. So, so far, a general and comprehensive theoretical framework of topological insulators and superconductors is obtained as periodic table. So this table is classified according to spatial dimensions and symmetry. So here, uh, the most uh, fundamental symmetries are time reversal symmetry, uh, particle hole symmetry, and chiral symmetry. And, uh, and in this table, uh, the zero means the absence of topological phases, and Z means uh, the presence of topological phases characterized by an integer. So many specific topological phases are classified into this periodic table. For example, the quantum hole insulator is classified into two-dimensional class A, and the topological superconducting wire, Kitaev's Marner chain, is classified into one dimensional class D. And the quantum spin hole insulator is classified into two dimensional class A2. So this is a current theoretical framework for topological insulators and superconductors. Okay, so despite the normal success, the existing framework of topological phases is confined to Hermitian systems at the equilibrium. However, uh, literal properties appear in non Hermitian systems. Uh, here, uh, non Hermitian arises from dissipation or exchanges of energy of particles in, with an environment. 
normality changes the conventional physics and leads to new phenomena. For example, in a photonic lattice with balance gain loss, uh, unidirectional light transport was realized. Also, in quantum many body systems, a bulk Fermi arc uh, is theoretically predicted because of finite lifetime quasar particles. Furthermore, the interplay of Nohamiristi and topology leads to new phenomena. As a prime example, uh, researchers develop a topological laser. So this is a new laser with high efficiency uh, due to the interplay between Nohamiristi and topology. Moreover, uh, several recent experiments observed a uh, non-hermitian skin effect. Uh, this is anomalous localization of an extensive number of boundary states uh, due to non-hermitian no state. So just uh, while conventional physics focuses on hermitian systems, uh, non-hermitian state is natural and everywhere. Unconventional phenomena occur as a result of the interplay between non-hermitian state and topology. So here, uh, one of the crucial consequences of non hermeticity is that non hermeticity gives rise to unique topological phases without Hermitian analogs. However, it has been unclear how to characterize such non Hermitian topology. The consequent bulk boundary correspondence in physical phenomena have also been unclear. The motivation of the present work is to develop a better understanding about such intrinsic non Hermitian topology and explore new non-Hermitian topological phenomena. Then we develop classification of uh, non-Hermitian topology. Uh, here we show that the two types of complex energy gaps, a point gap and line gap are essential. Uh, next, uh, we show uh, that intrinsic non-Hermitian topology leads to the skin effect. Well, this is a new type of back boundary correspondence unique to non-Hermitian systems. On the basis of this understanding, uh, we also propose symmetry protected non Hermitian skin effects. Then finally, uh, we develop topological field theory of non Hermitian systems and provide a universal uh, description of non Hermitian topological phenomena. Uh, from the field theoretical perspective, we also show that the skin effect is a signature of a quantum anomaly. So, in this talk, we discuss uh, these findings in detail. So here is our outline of this talk. Uh, we begin with the inter discussions about symmetry and topology in New Hampshire physics. Then on the basis of this general theoretical framework, uh, we describe and predict new non Hermitian topological phenomena. And as a prime example, uh, we discuss the non Hermitian skin effect in terms of non Hermitian topology. Then finally, uh, we develop a topological field theory of non Hermitian systems. Okay, so uh, we be begin with the uh, symmetry in non Hermitian physics. The results are mainly based on uh, these two papers. Okay, so before discussing the non Hermitian case, uh, we briefly review uh, symmetry in the conventional Hermitian physics. One of the most crucial symmetry is time reversal symmetry uh, defined by this equation. So here, uh, T is a unitary operator and star denotes a complex conjugation. Another important symmetry uh, is particle hole symmetry, uh, which appears in superconductors and superfluids. So in addition, uh, we have chiral symmetry as a combination of time reversal symmetry and particle hole symmetry. For Hermitian systems, uh, it is known that chiral symmetry is equivalent to sublattice symmetry. So these three symmetries constitute the tenfold symmetry class called outrun Sunbanwa symmetry class. So in these three symmetries, time reversal and particle hole symmetries are accompanied by complex conjugation and hence anti-unitary. So on the other hand, a chiral symmetry is not relative to complex conjugation and hence unitary. So these symmetries are important because uh, they allow for universal description of physical phenomena. For example, statistical properties of random matrices are universally determined by symmetry and symmetry is also relevant to uh, topological classification. Indeed, uh, outrun Sunbao symmetry is crucial for topological classification of insulators and superconductors. So we have this 
tenfold periodic table that classifies topological phases of insulators and superconductors according to spatial dimensions and symmetry. Uh, many famous topological systems, such as the quantum hole effects, uh, Kirk Dive Smirnoff chain, and quantum spin hole effects, are collectively classified uh, to this periodic table. So this classification table, uh, based on symmetry, uh, is the most fundamental theoretical framework of Hermitian topological insulators and superconductors. Okay, so as we see, uh, for Hermitian systems, uh, time reversal symmetry, particle symmetry, and chiral symmetry are most fundamental symmetries. Then we consider the generalization of these symmetries for non Hermitian systems. So it is non trivial whether these symmetries are, remain the same even in the presence of non Hermitity. In fact, uh, we find that each symmetry ramifies into two different symmetries due to non Hermitity. In addition, one of the time reversal symmetry and one of the particle symmetry are unified into the same symmetry class, uh, again, due to no hermitity. So in the following, uh, we discuss this symmetry ramification and unification in no hermitian physics in detail. Okay, first of all, uh, no hermitity uh, ramifies or bifurcates a symmetry and increases the number of symmetry classes. To see this symmetry ramification, uh, we consider a time reversal symmetry as an example. For Hermitian Hamiltonians, uh, time reversal symmetry is defined by this equation. So here, T uh, is a unitary operator, and star uh, denotes complex conjugation. Well, then, uh, time reversal symmetry can be generalized for a non Hermitian Hamiltonian H uh, by the same equation. So naively, it seems uh, that the generalization is uh, well done, but it can be generalized in another manner. To see it, uh, if we first, uh, we first notice that the complex conjugation and transposition are equivalent to each other for Hermitian Hamiltonians by definition. As a result, a time level symmetry defined with complex conjugation uh, is equivalent to the uh, time level of symmetry uh, defined in terms of transposition for Hermitian Hamiltonians. Thus, uh, time level of symmetry can be generalized to non Hermitian systems uh, with this equation in terms of transposition. So, importantly, uh, these two symmetries are equivalent to each other uh, for Hermitian systems, but they are not for non Hermitian Hamiltonians since complex conjugation and transposition are distinct. So as a result, our two symmetries are distinct symmetries for non Hermitian Hamiltonians. So here, uh, the symmetry are uh, defined in terms of complex conjugation, physically means time reversal symmetry. And the other symmetry defined in terms of transposition, physically means uh, reciprocity. Such symmetry ramification appears also for other symmetries. Uh, important examples include chiral symmetry. So in Hermitian systems, a chiral symmetry is defined by this equation and is known to be equivalent to sublattice symmetry. So it can be generalized to non-Hermitian Hamiltonians by this equation. However, the Hermitian conjugate of the Hamiltonian is equivalent to the original Hamiltonian uh, in the presence of Hermitity. So the original equation uh, is equivalent to the equation uh, defined by the Hermitian conjugation of the Hamiltonian. Then this condition can also be generalized to non-Hermitian systems. But again, importantly, uh, the original Hamiltonian and its Hermitian conjugate do not coincide with each other in general in the presence of non-Hermitity. As a result, our two symmetries are distinct from each other and symmetry ramifies due to non-Hermitity. Okay, so therefore, uh, each of time level of symmetry, particle symmetry, and chiral symmetry in Hermitian systems ramifies into two different symmetries uh, due to the distinction between complex conjugation and transposition. Moreover, a uh, non-Hermitian unifies a time level of symmetry and the Hermitian conjugate of particle symmetry. 
Okay, so these two symmetries are defined by these equations with complex conjugation and hence anti-unitary symmetries. So these anti-unitary symmetries are clearly distinct uh, from each other for Hermitian systems. However, uh, the uh, two symmetry classes are equivalent to each other uh, in the presence of no hermeticity. To see this symmetry unification, uh, we consider a non-Hamitian Hamiltonian uh, that respects time reposal symmetry. Then another non-Hamitian Hamiltonian, IH, uh, respects the other unitary symmetry, C. So here, a uh, multiplication by I is a one-to-one -one mapping uh, that does not change the eigenstates. So a set of non-Hamitian Hamiltonians that satisfies a uh, T symmetry is equivalent to the other set of non Hamiltonian Hamiltonians that satisfies C symmetry. So here we note that the multiplication by I is not allowed in the presence of Hamiltonian. Okay, so this symmetry unification can also be intuitively understood by considering the symmetry uh, constraint for complex spectra. Okay, in Hamiltonian systems with real spectra, uh, time level of symmetry gives no constraints. On the other hand, particle symmetry gives a uh, zero energy or E and minus E pairs. On the other hand, in the presence of no hamidity, the spectra can be complex and time reversal symmetry gives a uh, Leo energy or E and E star pairs. And the Hamishan conjugate of particle symmetry gives a uh, pure imaginary energy or E and minus E star pairs. <laughs> Uh, these constraints uh, can be understood well in the energy plane. So in the Hermitian case, a time level symmetry uh, gives no constraints. However, a particle symmetry gives a uh, zero energy or E and minus E pairs. So this means uh, that the Leo spectra should be symmetric uh, about zero energy. So thus these constraints are clearly distinct for Hermitian systems. On the other hand, uh, in the presence of no hamidity, time reversal symmetry makes a complex spectrum symmetric about the real axis. While the Hermitian conjugate of particle symmetry uh, makes the complex spectrum uh, symmetric about the imaginary axis. Uh, therefore, uh, these two constraints are transformed into each other uh, by rotating the complex plane by 90 degrees, and these symmetry classes are equivalent to each other. Okay, so as a result of uh, symmetry ramification and unification, the number of symmetry classes changes in no Hermitian systems. In Hermitian systems, uh, tenfold outland Zumbawa symmetry class serves as the most fundamental internal symmetry classification. In no Hermitian systems, by contrast, uh, it changes to 38-fold symmetry classification. Uh, first, uh, there is tenfold. Uh, symmetry class defined by time rebuttal symmetry, particle symmetry, and chiral symmetry. In addition, uh, there is an uh, additional tenfold Hamitian conjugate uh, as a symmetry class for non Hamitian Hamiltonians. Moreover, as we have seen in the previous slide, uh, sublattice symmetry defined by this equation is different from the chiral symmetry for no Hamish Hamiltonians. So adding, adding sublattice symmetry leads to additional 22 symmetry classes. So finally, uh, we have 10 plus 10 plus 22, then uh, uh, 42 sy symmetry classes. Uh, here, uh, we overcounted uh, uh, four symmetry classes uh, due to symmetry unification in no Hamish systems. So leading to the 38 fold symmetry class in total. Oh, this 38 fold symmetry classification is a non Hermitian generalization of the Artran Zumbawa symmetry classification. Okay, this fundamental change of symmetry uh, due to non Hermitity uh, leads to new physics. For example, uh, we have shown that the new universality appears for non Hermitian random matrices due to the symmetry ramification. In addition, uh, we show that no hamidity enables a uh, unique topological phases uh, without Hermitian counterparts. In particular, uh, in complete topological classification of no Hermitian gap systems, 
as well as no hamstring gap persistence that support the exceptional points. Okay, so next uh, we discuss topological characterization of no hamstring systems. First of all, an energy gap is needed to define a topological phase. However, a non Hamitian extension of an energy gap is non trivial uh, since the spectrum is generally complex. So, to consider an energy gap in non Hamitian systems, uh, let's revisit an energy gap in Hamitian systems. An energy gap is identified as an energy region where states are forbidden to be present. Uh, it should be point like or zero dimensional uh, in parameter space, uh, since the spectrum is real and one dimensional. Okay, so since uh, the complex spectrum has both real and imaginary first, and it's two dimensional in parameter space, such a vacant region can be a zero dimensional point or one dimensional line. Thus uh, in high emission systems, an energy point is relevant as an obstacle in the spectrum. But an energy point and also an energy line can be an energy obstacle in the complex spectrum for non hamitian systems. So we call these two types of complex energy gaps as a point gap and line gap. So notably, the definition that should be adopted depends on the individual physical situation that we are interested in. So importantly, the nature of topological phases depends on the type of complex energy gaps. Uh, first, uh, for a point gap, uh, we have the following theorem. So a non Hamitian Hamiltonian uh, with a point gap can be continuously uh, deformed into a unitary matrix while having symmetry in the, the point gap. So the classification of non Hamitian Hamiltonians uh, reduces to the well-established problem of group classification of unitary matrices. On the other hand, for line gap, uh, we have a different theorem. So in this case, a non Hamitian Hamiltonian with a line gap can be continuously uh, deformed into a Hamitian matrix while having symmetry in the line gap. So also in this case, classification of non Hamitian Hamiltonians uh, reduces to a well-established problem of classification of Hamitian matrices. Then in this manner, uh, we have classification table of non Hamitian topological phases. So in contrast to Hamitian counterparts, uh, it consists of 38 fold symmetry class and two types of complex energy gaps. Okay, so as can be seen in the general classification procedures, line gap topology uh, reduces to Hamitian topology and hence describes the stability of Hamitian topology against no -amidity. On the other hand, a point gap topology is not necessarily deformable to Hamitian topology and can be intrinsic to no Hamitian systems. Okay, so let's consider an example. The simplest example that exhibits such intrinsic non Hamish topology is the Hatton Nelson model. So, this model consists only of a nearest neighbor hopping, but the hopping amplitudes are asymmetric and non Hamishian. The Hamiltonian is given by uh, this equation uh, in real space, and the Bloch Hamiltonian is given by this equation in momentum space. So, this is a single bound. So we, we easily have a complex spectrum. And then this is a complex spectrum of the Hatton Nelson model. So it forms a loop in the complex energy plane and we can introduce the winding number. So importantly in Hamitian systems, the spectrum is always real and has such, such energy winding is ill-defined. Thus the uh, winding, this winding number at uh, the simplest topological, the simplest point gap topology is intrinsic to no Hamitian systems. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what are the physical consequences of intrinsic non Hamitian topology? So since the topology is intrinsic to non Hamitian systems, the corresponding physical phenomena should also be intrinsic to non Hamitian systems. 
So in the following, uh, let's consider a uh, uh, bulk boundary correspondence and topological field theory for the intrinsic non hamiltonian topology. Okay, so uh, then uh, we next consider about boundary correspondence non hamiltonian systems. The key phenomena are, are the non hamiltonian skin effects. So this is also a prime example of a non hamiltonian topological phenomena. The bulk boundary correspondence is a central principle of topological phases. So it predicts the emergence of anomalous boundary states due to non trivial bulk topology. Notably, anomalicity changes uh, the nature of bulk boundary correspondence. For example, uh, let's consider a non-hamishian extension of the Shushri-Fahiga model. So here we introduce non-hamishity by the asymmetric hopping, uh, similarly to the hatton nelson model. So even in the presence of non-hamishity, the Hamiltonian uh, respects sub symmetry. Then we can define the winding number uh, similarly to the Hamishan case. As a consequence of the winding number, uh, zero modes appear under the open boundary conditions. However, uh, the zero modes can be localized only at one edge uh, instead of both edges. So this is impossible in Hamishan systems and the unique property of non Hamishan topological systems. So to understand understand this phenomena, uh, uh, the non hamilton skin effect is crucial uh, for such anomalous localization of eigenstates. So it states that the old eigenstates, uh, even old eigenstates can be localized at the edges in non hamilton systems. In addition, uh, the bulk Hamiltonian uh, strongly depends on the boundary conditions. So the bulk Hamiltonian under the periodic boundary conditions it's different from the bulk Hamiltonian under the open boundary conditions. Notably, uh, this is impossible in Hamiltonian systems. For the non Hamiltonian SSH model, the bulk Hamiltonian is indeed different from uh, uh, different depending on the boundary conditions. So this is a complex spectra, uh, and the periodic boundary spectra uh, for loops in the complex energy frame. But the open boundary spectra are from arcs, and they are clearly different. So moreover, the bulk boundary correspondence is modified because of this skin effect. And the zero modes are predicted by the open boundary Hamiltonian, bulk Hamiltonian, instead of the periodic boundary Hamiltonian. So this is a modified bulk boundary correspondence in no Hamilton systems. However, uh, the modified bulk boundary correspondence is developed only for a uh, blind gap topology. In this case, a uh, no Hamiltonian Hamiltonian is deformable to a Hamiltonian Hamiltonian, and it, it is natural that we have the modified bulk, bound, bulk boundary correspondence. Then how about a bulk boundary correspondence for point gap topology? As discussed previously, a uh, no Hamiltonian Hamiltonian is deformable to a unitary Hamiltonian. And that's not necessarily uh, deformable to a uh, Hamiltonian Hamiltonian. Uh, this is why a point gap topology is intrinsic to no Hamiltonian Hamiltonians. Uh, we have, and, and thus we have no modified bulk boundary correspondence in this case. To understand the bulk boundary correspondence for point gap topology, let's again investigate the Hatton Nelson model. The Bloch Hamiltonian is given by this and characterized by the winding number. Then uh, let's make a boundary and uh, investigate the spectrum. So under the open boundary conditions, uh, however, the skin effect occurs and no point gap is open. So we cannot discuss a conventional bulk boundary correspondence uh, since no point gap is open. So is it possible to have an open boundary Hamiltonian with point gap topology? So the answer is actually a no. Or we can show that the open boundary Hamiltonian is always topologically trivial for a point gap. 
So then the next question is, uh, what does uh, point gap topology imply uh, in the presence of a boundary? So instead of the conventional back boundary correspondence, uh, we can show that the point gap topology actually leads to the non hamishan skin effect. More precisely, uh, we can show that uh, if the binding number point gap topology, so it's a binding number for point gap topology, uh, is non-trivial, the skin effect occurs. And otherwise, uh, no skin effect occurs. But therefore, uh, point gap topology, in other words, uh, intrinsic non hamishan topology, uh, leads to the non hamishan skin effect in the presence of a boundary. So this can be considered as a new type of boundary correspondence for intrinsic non hamishan topology. Okay, then uh, we know that point gap topology can be classified uh, in terms of symmetry. So in particular, we have topological phases are protected by a symmetry. Then the natural question is, uh, uh, can we classify skin effects or can we have symmetry protected skin effects? Our answer is yes. And we can have a new type of skin effects protected by symmetry. So this is how we can have, uh, we can predict a uh, new non hamishan topological phenomena systematically. Okay, to investigate symmetry protected skin effects, uh, we revisit uh, symmetry protected topological phases in Hamishan systems. So let's begin with the Chan insulator, such as the Harder model. Well, it is characterized by the non trivial Chan number and host chiral states. Okay, then let's uh, consider a time reversed pattern. The chiral states uh, move in the opposite direction. Finally, let's combine these two systems. So this is exactly the K-Mele model characterized by the Z2 invariant. Uh, this is a Z2 topological phase protected by time rebuttal symmetry. So let's do the same thing uh, for the non hamishan skin effect. So we begin with the hatton nelson model. Well, it is characterized by the winding number and all the eigenstates are localized at one edge under the open boundary conditions. Okay, then con we consider a reciprocal a partner. Its eigenstates are localized at the other edge. So finally, let's combine these two systems. Uh, there are eigenstates are localized at both edges. So this is a reciprocal skin effect with a Z2 invariant protected by uh, reciprocity. Okay, following this procedure, uh, we explicitly provide a non hamishan system uh, that exhibits a Z2 skin effect. So it indeed respects uh, reciprocity. So because of this symmetry, we have a Z2 topological invariant and the system exhibits Klamath degeneracy. So this is a complex spectra uh, for the uh, different boundary conditions. So under the periodic boundary condition, the spectrum forms a loop, loop in the complex energy plane. But under the open boundary conditions, the spectrum forms a line so this difference is a clear signature of the skin effect. We show uh, that corresponding eigenstates here. So each eigenenergy consists of two skin modes, one of which is localized uh, at the right, and then other of which is localized at left. So these two skin modes form a clamor sphere and are protected by reciprocity. So this, so in this way, on the basis of the relationship between the skin effect and the intrinsic non hamishan topology, we can explore uh, new types of skin effects or new types of non hamishan topological phenomena. Phenomena, okay. Okay, so far uh, we have discussed non hamishan topological phases on the basis of a uh, band theory. In the final part of uh, this talk, uh, we discussed topological field theory of non hamishan systems. Okay, for hamishan systems, topological phenomena are universally described by field theory. As a prime example, uh, the two plus one dimensional Chan Simon theory uh, describes the quantum Hall effect. Well, here, uh, C1 uh, denotes the Chan number, and A 
uh, denotes the uh, gauge potential. For this topological action, uh, the current is obtained as this, and the quantum Hall effect is in, indeed described by this uh, equation. So notably, uh, the action is gauge dependent in the presence of a boundary. Uh, this gauge known invariance is called a quantum anomaly. To retain gauge invariance, uh, this gauge known invariance is compensated by an anomaly at the boundary. And this requires the presence of the Kyrowitz states. So this is a pure theoretical understanding of bulk boundary correspondence. As another example, the axion electrodynamics describes the physics of three plus one dimensional topological insulators, uh, such as the magnetoelectric effect. Okay, so the topological action S uh, is de derived from a microscopic Hamiltonian H. So to see this derivation, uh, let's add a gauge potential A and the phi. Uh, and consider the quantum partition function defined here. So in this action, uh, psi, psi denotes uh, the matter degrees of freedom. Then let's integrate uh, the matter degrees of freedom, psi. Then for this partition function, we can have an effective action in terms of the gauge potential. In this procedure, uh, the topological invariant is given by the Green's function, g. For example, if we begin with the Chan insulator, uh, we obtain the two plus one dimensional Chan Simon theory. So in these procedures, an energy gap is needed because it ensures the well-defined topological action. So this is a summary uh, to derive topological view theory for a given Hamilton Hamiltonian. Okay, so uh, we want to have a topological action for a non Hamiltonian Hamiltonian. So naively, we expect that the same procedure gives a topological action even in the non Hamiltonian case. However, uh, this is not the case, and we do not have a well-defined action by these procedures. To see this, uh, this uh, let's revisit the Hatton Nelson model. So this is a complex spectrum uh, of the, this model. As discussed previously, uh, a point gap is open uh, for this model. However, a uh, non-line gap is open. So this is why the obtained action diverges uh, by the previous procedures. So in this sense, uh, the non hamiltonian systems uh, looks like a metal rather than an insulator. So even so, uh, we can have a unique topological invariant uh, because of a point gap. So it is notable uh, that the above formulation uh, assumes that the Gibbs states for equilibrium or assumes that the partition function are for canonical ensembles and focuses on the ground states. However, our intrinsic non hamiltonian topological phases arise only out of equilibrium. In such a non-equilibrium case, the Gibbs states and the ground states are no longer relevant. So this is also the reason why the space-time formulation is not applicable to intrinsic non hamiltonian topology. So uh, we seek a different formulation for field theory of non hamiltonian systems. We notice that time should pay, play a special role out of equilibrium. Then let's Fourier transform the field operator in terms of time. Then we have a spatial field theory shown here. So although it does not rely on equilibrium states, it has a clear physical meaning uh, since it is a generating function of the Green's function and hence captures all physical information. So for this space formulation, we have a well-defined uh, action even for intrinsic non hamiltonian topology. To see this, uh, we recall that the Green's function is important for the space-time formulation of Hamiltonian systems. An important observation uh, is that the Green's function is non hamiltonian is a non hamiltonian operator, even if the Hamiltonian is Hamishan. Here, if we replace the frequency omega with another wave number, 
uh, we have a non Hamiltonian Hamiltonian in d plus one dimensions. So this is why our space formulation works. So in this way, uh, we can show that uh, if we begin with a, a d, d plus zero dimensional non Hamiltonian systems uh, with a space formulation, this non Hamiltonian Hamiltonian uh, plays a role of the Green's function of a d minus one plus one dimensional Hamiltonian systems. So in the following, uh, we demonstrate that this formulation indeed works and universally explains the dynamics of non Hamiltonian topological systems. Okay, the simplest case is a one dimensional case. So if we begin with a non Hamiltonian uh, system in one dimension, such as a Hatton Nelson model, the space formulation uh, leads to the topological action. Uh, this is a one plus zero dimensional Chan Simon theory. So this contrasts with the zero plus one dimensional Chan Simon theory uh, for zero dimensional Hamilton systems uh, where time and scalar potentials are relevant. So, what physics does this action describe? So, we obtain the current of this uh, action as shown here. So it just says that the steady current arises as a result of the uh, topological environment, W1. So this is consistent with uh, non-reciprocal transport uh, due to non-hamilistic, uh, such as uh, symmetry coping. A possible application of this result uh, is a directional amplification of or a directional laser in open photonic systems. Our field theory collectively describes such non-hamilistic topological phenomena. Okay, uh, next, uh, let's revisit the skin effects uh, by this effective action and the gauge principle. So suppose uh, that we have a finite system with boundaries at the uh, left and right. For this open boundary system, uh, let's take a gauge transformation. Then the topological uh, action transformed as shown here. And it is uh, not not gauge invariant. So this violation of the gauge invariance is exactly a quantum anomaly. So to retain gauge invariance, uh, additional degree of freedom is needed at the boundary. This corresponding correspond action is given here and the phi uh, is a phase of the wave function. So this gauge, uh, this boundary action is also gauge dependent. However, uh, the combination of the bulk action and the boundary action, uh, it's gauge invariant. So this is how uh, the gauge invariant, gauge principle is uh, uh, restored. So physically, this uh, boundary action uh, describes the pair of charges at the boundary. And this is exactly the scheme modes. So that's uh, from this field theoretical perspective, the non Hamiltonian ski effect is a signature of a quantum anomaly. Okay, the one dimensional case may be a relatively trivial example, but uh, one of the advantages of the field theory description is that we can easily generalize it to more non trivial cases. So generally, a D dimensional non Hamiltonian systems are described uh, by the D plus zero dimensional Chan Simon theory. So here D is odd. The next example is a three-dimensional non Hamiltonian systems. So in this case, uh, we have the three plus zero dimensional Chan Simon theory. So this contrasts with the uh, two plus one dimensional Chan Simon theory that describes the quantum Hall effect. So let's investigate physics of this effective action. The current is obtained as uh, shown here. So in this three-dimensional system, the current uh, arises in the direction uh, proportional to a magnetic field. So this is exactly the chiral magnetic effect. So in the conventional chiral magnetic effect, uh, we impose uh, both electric field and magnetic field, and we have a current uh, in the direction proportional to these fields. In our non Hamiltonian case, no homeostasis plays a role of an electric field and uh, makes non-trivial topology. 
So this is a new type of non-harm emission topological phenomena that generally appear in these three dimensions. So as an application, uh, this result implies that in three dimensions, we can make a direction laser controlled by a magnetic field. So it is also notable that the other work uh, uh, explicitly showed that such a chiral magnetic effect occurs in the no harm emission lattice model. So we next consider the corresponding boundary signature. Okay, for the two plus one dimensional Chan Simon theory, uh, the quantum Hall effect occurs and the boundary exhibits the uh, Kailawet state. We know uh, that the Kailawet state has a Kailaw anomaly, and it is described by a Kailaw anomaly equation shown here. Uh, here, this equation describes the response of the Kailaw states uh, against an electric field. In our non Hamishan case, we have the three plus zero dimensional Tan Simon theory. So, similarly, the boundary also exhibits a Kailaw anomaly. But in this case, as discussed before, our time is replaced with another spatial component, uh, in this case, Y, and the electric field is replaced with a uh, magnetic field. Then we have a Kylo anomaly equation. In terms of the global quantities, uh, we have this equation. Here, N is the number, uh, N is the charge of the boundary degrees of freedom and uh, large phi, uh, is a magnetic cross. So this Kyler anomaly equation says uh, that the number of the skin modes is given by the number of the magnetic fluxes uh, in three-dimensional no harm emission systems. Well, this result from the field theory can also be confirmed by a lattice model. So here we investigate the no harm emission lattice model in three dimensions and not a unique magnetic flux. flux. So under the open boundary conditions, the skin modes indeed appear along the magnetic field. So in this way, uh, we can generally uh, explore and predict new non emission topological phenomena, including new skin effects on the basis of topological view theory. Okay, so finally, we summarize this talk. So we first show uh, that non harmonicity changes the nature of symmetry and leads to a 38-fold internal symmetry. Another important consequence of non harmonicity is that non harmonicity gives rise to unique topological phases without Hamishian analogs. We show that intrinsic non Hamishian topology leads to the skin effect instead of the conventional back boundary correspondence. Then we develop a field theory of intrinsic non Hamishian topology. So from the field theoretical perspective, uh, no, we demonstrate that the skin effect is a signature of a non Hamishian anomaly. So this is the end of my talk, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kohai. Any questions, comments? Yeah, may I ask a question? Joshua, yeah, sure, please. Actually, two, two questions, if, if I may. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Kawabata-san, thank you very much for yeah. your uh, yeah. interesting uh, talk. Um, thank you. So, a uh, first question. Uh, the, the point topology means uh, that I cannot shrink the spectrum, right? That there is a hole in the, in the middle of the spectrum, I cannot shrink it. So uh, uh, what about, uh, uh, and the, uh, what about uh, uh, models which are inherited in some sense from normal matrices, for example, um, in, in normal matrix theory, I could have spectra which have concentric, uh, concentric um, uh, rings of eigenvalues uh, on different radii or, or in some annuli. So would that be some generalization of your uh, point, uh, point topology? Uh, uh, I, I could not uh, shrink those rings uh, in, into a point and then those rings are also, are also separated by voids which are, and the voids are some sort of uh, a, a circular line. I mean, in, 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 in your uh, uh, line uh, uh, kind of spec, uh, in, in, in your uh, uh, line like gaps, you, the, the lines are always infinite. But if you have concentric rings of eigenvalues, then you have separ separatrices of eigenvalues which are closed. 
Mm. So is this some sort of a generalization? Would be would that be some sort of a generalization of your point gap spectra? Uh, so I may fail to get the situation, but so you discussed the case, Let's say for example, a hotanone, in this case. But, but, but several uh -huh. ellipses, ellipses uh, with bigger. Uh, so, so we have a several loops, right? So yeah, yeah. not one loop. Not yeah, just yeah, we can, loop. yeah, we can apply our formalism to such a general case. So even and, if and we have many loops, uh, we can use a uh, uh, point gap topology framework. Uh -huh. And and then the index would just be the sums of the various ellipses. Uh, the index. Yeah, the exactly, box. exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, that's uh, okay. That that answers my first question. Thank you. Uh, the second mm -hmm. uh, uh, question involved involving also a comment has to do with the uh, beginning of your last section on the topological field theory, where you wrote mm -hmm. a path integral uh, with mm -hmm. the uh, non-Hermitian Hamiltonian. So. Uh, first of all, uh, even even in the uh, space uh, space like uh, uh, pass integral where you where you take uh, take a particular omega and uh, uh, define the determinant of the of the uh, uh, Hamiltonian of of, uh, of the inverse propagator uh, for for a given omega, uh, even mm -hmm. then the integral may not uh, may not converge. For example, if you use the bosonic uh, uh, degrees of freedom rather than fermionic because the Gaussian, mm -hmm. if the Gaussian has negative directions, it will not converge. No, I see, I see. So, so you need, you need to double, you, you know, I like doubling uh, degrees of freedom. So yeah, you, yeah, need, yeah. you need to double the, the degrees of freedom uh, to, to consider a hermitized uh, system. And they, mm -hmm. this relates to a second comment. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree that, I agree that with non-hermitian uh, in the non-hermitian case, uh, I cannot talk about Gibbs, uh, uh, the Gibbs state and the equilibrium mm -hmm. state. I completely agree. But mm -hmm. what about uh, another type of doubling uh, related to the first doubling, I suppose, uh, mm -hmm. associated with the uh, Schwinger-Keldish uh, uh, approach, which also deals with mm -hmm. non-equilibrium. So you have uh, mm -hmm. the, the time forward uh, propagation and the time backward propagation together on, on a close time, uh, Mm -hmm. like loop uh, mm -hmm. and that that integral should exist yeah 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 so that's integral did you think about such uh, doublings okay so yeah these questions are very important and then the okay, for well, the first first point okay so mm -hmm. yeah we implicitly assume that the, we consider fermionic cases okay and then if we consider a bosonic okay in in the fermionic cases uh the Presence of point gap topology ensures a well-defined topological action mm -hmm. in this case, okay. but uh, we we have no idea about the bosonic case. So we may have a, we we may have to consider a different type of field theory in the bosonic case. Yeah, this this is an interesting uh, future problem. Yeah, thank you. And then the okay next next point. Okay, yeah, the next point is also on a very important point. Yeah, as you said, uh, if we consider a uh, schwinger keldish formalism. Uh, we may uh, uh, develop a field theory for non hamiltonian systems uh, in the space-time formulation. Yes. Yeah, we, we have also uh, considered such a direction in terms of uh, schwinger keldish formalism. Mm -hmm. But so far, we have uh, no idea uh, whether we can develop such a uh, keldish formulation for non hamiltonian system, a uh, non hamiltonian topology, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Aurelia has a question. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your nice talk. I was just wondering on this two energy gap that you have. So you have the point gap and then the line gap. So mm -hmm. I understand this is the scheme that you use to represent it, but is it important or uh, that uh, to know how tilted is the line? So. When you have this line gap, whether it's like vertical, you would have like line gap around like the lifetimes and whether it goes like mm -hmm. more horizontal would be towards the energy. So is the line yeah. just to show the, the separation between the two energy uh, region or is there any physics into the orientation of this line? Okay, so I think that uh, this uh, depends on the individual physical situations. So in gen general, uh, the line can be arbitrary without symmetry. But uh, so for example, in the presence of certain symmetry, 
uh, we have to uh, choose a line, uh, uh, the certain line, for example, in the imaginary axis. So uh, to respect the symmetry, we, ha we have to uh, respect the uh, line as a exactly Im imaginary axis in the presence of certain symmetry. Okay, so in, in, in such a case, uh, we may have to appropriately choose a, a reference line for the line gap. And I think this depends on the individual uh, symmetry and also individual physical situation, uh, what, which we are, we investigate. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Federico has a question. Yeah, um, hi, Kohei, thank you very much. Hi. For this. Um, thank um, you. Can you, uh, could you just go back to slide uh, 13? Because maybe I saw something that I didn't fully understand. So, so sorry, okay. The, uh, this one, so 30. Uh, no, uh, 13, so one, ah, 13, one okay. Oh, sorry. sorry. 13, okay. Mm. When you, let's say, counted the 38 uh, class. Okay, uh, this one. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. The, when you count the tenfold for the first time and then the second time, mm. the last two equations with gamma looks to be the same. So I'm wondering, are you counting twice the same things or is something is there something that i don't fully understand oh ah, yeah yeah so as you said uh we have our overlap so yeah so yeah, due to the same chiral symmetry so so this includes a, a minus four in this case so we uh subtract uh, this overlap uh, okay 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 thank you Uwe. Yeah, uh, many thanks for this very nice talk. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I, ha I have a little question. I'm uh, mm. just for curiosity. Uh, did you consider models uh, as parameter dependent and moving in your uh, symmetry schemes from one region to another region, having in mind the kind of symmetry breaking and passing from one symmetry situation to another situation? Did you already cover such uh, phase transition kind of behavior or not yet? Uh, so, so you mean that uh, here we implicitly assume that the symmetry of operator is a, a fixed operator, but uh, you consider a, a parameter dependent symmetry operator, right? Yeah, it just the simple models. It has to pass from one symmetry class to another symmetry class, looking uh -huh. how also these uh, boundary anomalies are mm -hmm. uh, reshaping and uh, how these topology changes might be. Oh, I see, I see. Oh. Did, did you do yeah, any right. such things or not yet? Um, not yet, yeah, this is a very interesting question. Yeah, uh, it's very interesting to investigate such problems, but I have yet to investigate such problems. Oh, ah, okay. Mm, yeah, it's very you. interesting, yeah. Yes, thank many you. things, mm -hmm. many things. Maxime. Hi, Andres. Hi. Hi, uh, hi Kobatsan. san Thank you very much for the nice ah, talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I have just one, one little, little question. Uh, mm -hmm. You have mentioned this um, chiral magnetic effect, the chiral magnetic mm -hmm. spin effect. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, you see that um, it's known right now that chiral magnetic effect cannot exist in equilibrium. So mm, right, right. Equilibrium phenomenon. Mm -hmm. yeah, I so see. It can exist uh, close uh, to equilibrium, but not at uh, equilibrium. Mm. So, uh, exactly. and, uh, you know, we discussed some time ago, just in the metal exchange, that it's, uh, we have shown that it's uh, in non-Hermitian theories, especially, especially in this PT symmetric non-Hermitian theories, you can derive chiral magnetic effect and it exists there, but it's just because the theory can be considered like of equilibrium, basically. Yeah, so it's open system. So mm -hmm. in your case, you have this W3, uh, this uh, topological, kind of topological uh, number, I would say, mm -hmm. So do we see that, for example, if you take uh, just take your non-Hermitian theory and then move to Hermitian limit, uh, does this effect uh, disappear or it stays there? Can you comment on that? What happens in the Hermitian limit? Okay, so 
Yeah, in the Hermitian limit, the so in this case, the point gap is closed. Yes. Okay. So in such a case, the topological invariant is uh, no longer well defined. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the topological invariant vanishes, and uh -huh. then the uh, chiral magnetic effect also vanishes. Oh, that's good. That's good. So then yeah, you yeah. have a really consistent uh, limit. Okay, that's what actually I wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Any more questions, comments? We had a lot. So thank you very much, Kohai. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, thanks everybody for coming.